Due to issues with room acoustics, especially problems in the low end of a lot of rooms, people often will prefer to work in headphones. There's also a cost effectiveness and portability factor that make them really attractive. I know a lot of engineers who will opt to use headphones on the road or even as an additional point of reference. And I would put myself in that category. I have an amazing control room with a very flat frequency response. I have full range monitors, but a lot of my clients are gonna be listening to the music on the end destination in headphones. And so I always include headphones as one of my points of reference when finishing a mix or a master. Headphones take the room out of the equation, so to speak, and can much more easily produce an accurate and smooth low frequency response than in a room with speakers. They do suffer from some, not all, but some of the acoustical issues of speakers in rooms. Headphones at the end of the day really are just little speakers inside tiny rooms called ear cups. So when you're critically listening to engineering and evaluating music, there's a need for an accurate frequency response. If you don't have that, then your perception of the music or the sound coming through the headphones will be skewed, and that could lead you to make errors in your engineering decisions. Let's talk about some of the problems with working with headphones. A lot of headphone models will try and straddle the pond between audiophile and recreational listeners, and then people who are using the headphones for critical listening and engineering music. It's this try and please everyone approach that oftentimes leads to wildly different tunings and then compromises. It's been proven through research that engineers and people that are using headphones to critically listen to music have a really different set of priorities and a different desired frequency response to audiophile and recreational listeners. And for that reason, any headphone that tries to please everybody is going to be kind of a jack of all trades, but master of none. Some of the differences in tuning can be seen when you look at frequency response plots. So you can take a look at this graph of the frequency response of the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros, and you can see that it has accentuated highs. If you take a look at some other headphones like the Sennheiser HD 650s, you'll see that these are much closer to flat, much more restrained. So if I was to mix music on the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros, I would likely seriously undermix the high end because of the amount of extra sound pressure that those are producing above 5K. Whereas if I was mixing on the HD 650s that are producing frequencies that are much less in amplitude in the high end, I would mix the highs differently. So you can see the crux of the problem here is when you have wild differences in frequency response and between the different headphone makes and models, how do you actually get accurate, true pictures and representations of what you're mixing? What you might find really surprising is that even with headphones of the same make and model, there can still be significant variations between them. So if you pick up two different sets of Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros, you would likely find that they actually have a different frequency response. And this is just because of manufacturing tolerances. They're gonna try and match the components from headphone to headphone as best they can, but they're not gonna be throwing out a ton of drivers and they're gonna have a range of tolerances in their QA process that's gonna be within spec. So you can pick up multiple sets of the same headphones and they can sound different. Okay, so that's a problem. Now, what about differences between the left and the right driver? That also is a thing. So generally that's called channel balance. You want the level of the left and the right driver to be the same, but you also want the frequency response of those components to be the same. And because you cannot ever perfectly match drivers, you're gonna have discrepancies between the left and the right side, which can really actually radically affect your perception of stereo field. This issue is generally more prominent in headphones that are lower budget. You oftentimes don't see it on headphones that are really at the high end of the market, but it's something to pay really close attention to. Let's talk about low frequency extension. All drivers reach a point in the low frequency response where they just can't produce frequencies below that and they begin to roll off. And headphones are no different. However, there are differences between various headphone makes and models and designs. So if you take a look at the dynamic driver open back style of headphones like the Sennheiser HD series, you'll see a really dramatic roll off below 60 Hertz. Now I've said this before, you can't mix what you can't hear, and considering that headphones, a lot of people are using them to be able to check the low end, well, how good is that for you if you can't hear below 60 hertz? That's a critical range for kick and bass. So we have other designs of headphones like the planar magnetic designs by Odyssey and Hi-Fi Man that have much better low frequency response. But even if your headphones aren't super low frequency oriented, that's where calibration can come to the rescue. 
Any conversation around headphones would be incomplete if we didn't also address psychoacoustics. Psychoacoustics combines two things. It's the physiology of sound, how our bodies and unique anatomy receive sound, and the psychology of sound, how our brains perceive and process that audio information coming in. The way you receive sound through headphones is really different from the way you receive it through speakers. Headphones, by virtue of being clamped onto your head, come directly into the ear at a 90 degree angle. Whereas when you're listening on speakers, they're typically set up in an equilateral triangle, 30 degrees off center. And with speakers, there's crosstalk. You hear both the left and the right speaker simultaneously in both ears. And that's uh, because what happens is sound from one speaker will bend around the head and reach the other ear at a slight time delay, a slightly lower level, and it will also be different in spectrum. So that's something called anatomical shadowing or head shadowing. And you don't have that in headphones unless you're using special software like can opener. Now, the other thing that you have that's a consideration in headphones is decay times. Decay times in headphones are often very short, much shorter than they would be in rooms. In rooms, you have resonant support, you have reflective boundaries, and especially in the low end, that causes the low frequencies to be able to ring or decay longer, sometimes upwards of a second or even longer. Where in headphones, you don't have that. You either have sound able to escape through open back or vented designs, or you have sound that is attenuated very quickly by internal damping structures inside the ear cups. Psychoacoustically, when you hear a frequency that decays faster, your brain perceives it as quieter. And this is another major difference to get between audio engineering on headphones or on speakers. In rooms, you have these longer decay times. You'll perceive the low end frequencies especially as louder just because they're longer. Whereas when you're mixing in headphones, everything is shorter and you're likely to hear the bass as quieter because it's decaying faster. That could, again, cause you to make errors in judgment when it comes to how you mix or EQ the bass. For me, when I started working on headphones, at the beginning, I was always over-mixing the bass. And that was because I'd become really adjusted and adapted to making these engineering decisions in rooms. And the room that I was working in at the time, it was before this room that has really nicely controlled low end. It suffered from a really common problem in a lot of studios, which is modal ringing in this low frequency. So I had low frequencies that were taking longer to decay, and I perceived those as louder. Then when I started to go over to headphones that had a really, really short decay in the bass, even at the same level, I was perceiving that as, oh, the bass is too low, it needs to be jacked up. So I was boosting the bass. And then when I took the mix and listened to it on another system on speakers, it was immediately apparent that there was a big discrepancy there. I'd overmixed it, it was muddy, and that needed to be addressed. So what I did is I tried to simulate the psychoacoustic perception of bass that I experienced when I was in a room on speakers by changing the house curve. So I took the house curve in the Sonarworks Sound ID reference app and I increased it by 3 dB. That gave me that extra sensation of bass in the headphones that matched with my perception of the bass in my studio. And that allowed me to really start nailing the low end in my mixes, no more muddy bass. Another aspect to consider is that when you're listening to music on speakers, you have a physical wave front that's hitting your body, creating a tactile sense of the sound. And on headphones, you don't have that. Some headphone users have augmented that by using a wearable transducer, like a subpack, that gives them that felt, tactile sense of the sound frequencies. Now, besides what I've mentioned here today, there's a lot more information to dig down in on the differences between mixing in headphones or on speakers. I would highly encourage you to check out an article written by another one of our technical writers, Adam Kagan, who is also a experienced mix and mastering engineer, on the differences in mixing between headphones and speakers. So let's land the plane and discuss why all of this is important. Well, whether or not you have access to a studio with speakers, at some point you're going to want to use headphones. Maybe you're trying to hit a deadline and you're working into the wee hours of the night and you can't have your speakers on. Maybe you live in an apartment with paper thin walls and you're one noise complaint away from getting asked to leave the building. Or maybe you're just tired of being in a dark room with no windows and you want to go full digital nomad and produce music from the beach in Costa Rica. That sounds nice, right? Well. Headphones are a critical tool in your toolbox, and you need to know with confidence that when you go to pick them up and put them on, that what you're gonna hear is gonna translate. The best way to make sure you can trust your headphones is to have your own unique set analyzed and calibrated. 
That'll take care of both the general frequency response, as well as any differences between the left and the right driver that might be causing problems. Headphones aren't really subject to a lot of the acoustical issues of speakers and rooms. In fact, there's no acoustic testing on your part necessary for this individual calibration. Everything's done at the Sonarworks lab. When you have accurate, calibrated headphones, you can effectively wear the studio on your head and travel freely wherever you want. Due to the psychoacoustic differences between working on speakers and working on headphones, it's really useful to have some of the features in the Sonarworks Sound ID Reference software, such as the custom house curve. That can really help you to adapt from mixing on speakers to mixing on headphones. All right, that's a wrap for this video. I'll catch you on the next one.